Again, all the videos, the cleaning videos, the maintenance documents, the best practices, all that information is easy to find, specifiedconcrete.org. Questions? Ideal projects? So you cannot do it in places where winters are hard? Well, it's not so much the severity of the winter, um, it's that the icing haven't been stopped. I mean, you can pull out if you put a boot on the bottom of your plow. You can put sand on it. That's the first thing everyone wants to know. I'm surprised. That's usually the first question. What can I? Because we recommend sand. You're going to vacuum it in the spring. You want to get something with some traction. You're going to vacuum that sand back out again in the spring. You just don't use the icing chemicals. If you do have to use the icing chemicals, do you use salt brine? I, honestly, I, I wish I had the answers right now of which one you can use. And what we found with the salt brine pad, the salt brine pad looks fine. It ran through, our infiltration rate was so great on the salt brine pad that it ran straight down through, and I put it on heavy with a sprayer, it ran straight down through and the, the gravel detention bed underneath was just white, covered with white salt whenever I, I did the core drilling. Um, right now, I have a testing lab who's working on the, the cores and analyzing to find out. And one of the things that we learned from magnesium chloride is magnesium chloride will get in and eat away the cement paste. The surface may look fine, but it eats away the cement paste. So it's one of the things they're going to do with the research study is looking at mag chlorides and what that causes. I actually did side by side, I did regular concrete as well. When I did these porous pads, I did a, a section of regular concrete too, because I wanted to compare the regular concrete to the porous concrete. What's the difference? Concrete's concrete, right? But when you look at the porous concrete, how much cement paste is surrounding that little stone compared to a solid concrete surface? You've got minimal amount of cement paste covering those stones, and that cement paste gets attacked by chemicals, it's going to fall apart. If it happens on regular concrete, you've got so much cement paste there and so much coverage, you don't have as much of a chance of it falling apart as if you, you know, have the, the, the porous concrete. Can you write that back in the equipment? Absolutely, absolutely. The, the rental companies. Um, you know, contractors, rental supplies have them. Billy Goat makes one. They actually have one here. Billy Goat makes one, and, and Little Wonder makes one. You can rent them. You know, half a day, the place that I get them from is 40 bucks for half a day to rent one. You know, I mean, how can you? They're, they're around $2,800 to buy one. You know, to buy it and store it and deal with it, I'll go to the room place and pick one up for $28 or for $40 every time. Question? Yes, uh, Fort Hill, yes. Um, we have a lot of water running down. I mean, it's amazing. Is there a way to find out how much water you absorb uh, by the concrete and where it's Oh, absolutely. We're, we're putting gravel underneath this thing. You know, the, the concrete or asphalt surface is, is just minimal. It's only a few inches, you know, five, six inches on top. The rest is a gravel detention bed that's underneath it. If you want to hold a hundred year storm, you know, it's designed, you're going to have a gravel base, which is in the gravel itself, you're going to have 40% of the area is going to be detained for, for detention base. So they can calculate, you know, if you've got this big of an area and you want to put it into here, how much gravel do you need underneath there? Um, I always recommend putting a pipe, a discharge pipe up high in case it fills up. You know, if that thing completely fills up and water gets into the concrete or asphalt and freezes, it's going to come apart. 
So having a safety pipe, discharge pipe at the top in case it does fill up, you know, it is minimal cost and it definitely helps. Bruce, as you know, uh, we never figured on an overspray of the salt from Public Works on the Eco Center in Laramie. Mm -hmm. But we think that if we possibly put up a siltation fence along the bias well, that would have helped. Do you think that's true or it wouldn't have helped? I don't know, honestly. I mean, it, it, it's now that we think about it, how can we stop that? What can we do? And we do need to do some research into figuring out what would help. How can you how can you stop that? Uh, one of the other projects that, that both Lisa and I have been at is the Engineer Society building in Greenfield, right? Lower Greenfield, four mile run. Yeah, four mile run, and it's it's very easy to see what the situation is there. There are sidewalks on two roads. You know, on Saline Street, the sidewalks are falling apart. That's the main road. The one that goes up the hill barely gets used, and they don't put much of the icing chemicals on it, and that still looks new. So it's easy to see, okay, you're going this way, there's traffic, it's falling apart up there, they don't get any traffic, so it's easy to determine that it's been the icing, the icing chemicals. Instead of using de-icing chemicals, is there a possibility of using like a heating element to deal with the ice? Uh, I don't know if, if you mean like yeah I don't know if enough people have researched doing ice belt underneath the pervious concrete to see you know will the heat transfer Bruce, Bruce you already have a condition of geothermal coming through your gravel reservoir up through the pervious often when you get just a few inches of no, you don't even have to shovel it. You just wait an hour or two, and it's gone because of the heating condition from below. That's true, but I mean, I've said that for years, but one thing I did learn from doing my test pads, once it ices up and freezes over, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't melt back out of there again. You know, I had standard concrete, and I had pervious concrete. In the standard concrete, the sun would come out and it would melt it off in, in, in no time. But the pervious, once those little holes, and my counterpart, he's a big foodie. So everything he relates to is food. And when I told him this, he said, yeah, it's kind of like the Thomas's English muffin. You know, once the butter gets down into the grooves, it doesn't come out. Like, yeah. yeah, that's it. But, you know, in reality, once they get down into that, the grooves and plug those holes up, it doesn't want to melt out of there. Black sand to absorb the Absolutely. Sunshine. Black sand is the best way to go, exactly. How effective is it in the public application? You do have a liability factor. How effective is it? I don't know enough to say how. You have a liability, I mean, but my opinion is, is standard concrete. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the, the salt and the chemicals are affecting everything. I mean, you look at how many projects, all the green space around the projects are gone now because of the icing chemicals. So, you know, the bottom line is we need to look at those chemicals and how they're affecting everything. It's affecting my concrete, it's affecting Eric's green stuff, it's affecting everything. And we need to do more research to figure out what we need to use and how we need to change this. One more question. What's the cost between regular concrete and porous concrete? Between, and between the two, the costs are very similar. But you're looking at, cre at, at creating a detention area underneath. So you know, cost, concrete versus concrete, you may only be 10% more for the concrete, but you may have two to three feet of gravel underneath it as a detention base, depending on what your, your, your design is. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over. Thank you very much, Bruce. Back. Bruce is one of the main motivators to have today's workshop. I think this is the first workshop of its kind in the Pittsburgh area, just uh, focusing on maintenance and encouraging landscaping professionals and municipal public works folks to attend. He's 
said, you know, this is really bothering me. We have all these great designs and installations. They cost a lot of money and they're supposed to be um, protecting local water quality and they're not working just because people get all excited about putting them in and installing them. And once that kind of fades, they're not being okay. So thanks, Bruce.